September 14th, good day, Santa Clarita. We're at 2024, 2024, 2024. I'm Connor McIver. Let's talk about what's happening in real estate this weekend. We're at Saturday, so typically you're gonna be seeing, and I've already been out this morning, we've already been seeing the open house signs starting to be strategically posted. A lot of times you're watching as these signs are being put the evening prior to the open house being held so that the agents get more seen sign time out there in the field. Just something to know if you're looking for that open house and it's not during typical open house hours, which are between somewhere between maybe 10 in the morning and three or four or five in the afternoon, typically held on weekends. If you're not seeing the actual open house, then more than likely it's a pre-staging of the signs. And in some cases, agents do it themselves. And in some cases, they pay people to do it. So if you're out there driving around looking for open houses, the best resource you're gonna find is gonna be Santa Clarita, openhouses.com. You'll be able to search from where you are in close proximity to where you are by city, anywhere in greater Los Angeles, and of course, Santa Clarita Valley. Today's market watch has us up to 550 active residential listings on the market for sale. Having said this, one of the things that I will mention to you is this inventory has been very low lately. However, we are watching an increase less than two and a half, three weeks ago, we were barely breaching 500 units for sale. Now we're at 550. I would see that number continue to grow, but it's going to very much depend on that interest rate. Currently interest rates have been reducing because there is rumor, of course, the Fed's going to be meeting this next week, the 17th and 18th. Of course, they have plans to reduce the Fed fund rate. That's what people have been talking about. The Fed fund rate is not the mortgage rate that you're thinking about when you're out there wanting to contemplate or wanting to buy residential real estate. However, usually a change in that rate usually has a change in the real estate mortgage rate. If that rate comes down, we should see a corresponding change to also the mortgage rate should because the mortgage rate also depends on the bond and also other markets and the economy and so on. But a good indication in the way that it's been talked about lately, it sounds like next week we're gonna see that reduction. How much? Don't know. Last time the Fed met, they didn't change it much at all. That's why we're still in this market. However, we do have limited inventory and although we're up at 550, that still doesn't change a lot because we have very much a buyer's interested market. People are still out there purchasing real estate. I have seen an increase on the days on market timeframes as I talked about the last couple shows, but these numbers aren't very much at all. Looking into the listings that we've seen posted in the past seven days, and you can see all these at santacredopenhouses.com, but coming soon listings are 11. 82 new listings have entered the market in the past seven days. We have 81 properties that have had their prices changed. About that, this previous week, I did do a story talking about the price changing and the price changes here in the Santa Clarita real estate market. Now, because there are prices changed, sometimes that would indicate the market is very robust if the prices happen to be increasing. In this particular case, we see a reduction in those prices. So the price changes aren't increases, but reductions. Usually every reduction is a property that's been on the market 10 plus days where the sellers aren't getting as much activity as they thought. And maybe their agent informed them that the listing price should be a, another number, but the sellers wanted to go a little bit higher just to make sure they didn't miss out on any of the higher interest offers. Unfortunately, a lot of times that doesn't really pan out. People know what they're looking at and with all the online syndication systems that are also showing what they believe properties are worth, based on their algorithmic approach to property data mining and those sorts of things, they run into issues where those numbers aren't really reflective of that individual local market, hence the importance of getting that agent, the local on the ground agent that understands why a property in Northbridge might sell at a higher price point, price per square foot than a property in North Park to give you a couple of examples that probably don't apply very much However, those examples are important to note because if you're not locally in Santa Clarita, Northbridge and North, North Park don't make any sense. 
but if you are local out here and you live in Valencia or live somewhere in the Santa Clarita Valley, more than likely you've encountered North Bridge and North Park. There are other communities like that, that if you go to online syndication systems, you ask how much your particular North Park home is worth, the system is gonna come back with a number and it's gonna depend on what type of action the system is trying to elicit out of you. So as a potential home buyer, more than likely they want to give you values that show that the property is maybe a better deal. So you reach out through their site, they'll get paid through the agent that they're referring you to and all is great in the world. On the other end of it, if you're inquiring on these systems of a, as a seller, more than likely you're gonna encounter a different pricing strategy when it comes to that algorithm that's putting together the determination as far as value goes of the residents that you're contemplating selling. It all seems to be set up around you making a decision that's going to benefit these companies. I say this, try to find that local resource. Somebody that talks about the market, somebody that explains what's happening in the real estate market, and somebody that has their fingers on the pulse of the local market as far as housing goes. Once you find that resource, then they should start to set you up with the different things that you're going to need to be made aware of. How is real estate selling currently? How is the market? What can you expect? What kind of offers can you expect? What are the local buyers looking like? If you're a buyer, should you be concerned about Melarus tax? When does it end? Are HOAs, what do they actually pay for for homeowners association? Are you able to finance all properties that have an HOA? Are there insurance issues? There are a lot of different questions that need to be asked and answered for people that are interested locally. Now, global systems, those syndication sites, they're not local on the ground. People that live in your community, typically that are owning and operating these systems, they're built around monetization and hopefully they'll be able to get some money for you going to their system. Use the local channels, Santa Clarita Open Houses is my system. Go there, you'll be able to see everything currently for sale, not just everything being held open in open houses, but the entire MLS database is there. In addition, I also have a property valuation system that pulls on MLS data, but again, that isn't going to be as precise as me looking at your house in person and then divvying up what I can see as far as additions, omissions, and subtractions that I have to put into the system in order to get you the best variable or the best price, the price, the best property that is, to make sure that we're listed correctly when we go onto the market so we don't have to encounter these price changes or change anything because right out of the chute, your house is going to get all the online activity, exposure, and everything else you need Plus that price is gonna be right. And as I said earlier, buyers understand the market and they are looking what your house seems to be valued on, on the syndication sites. My job is to try to let everybody know it comes down to more than that. And in fact, when I have buyers looking at residential real estate and they're bringing me how much a particular property is worth when that's different than the listing price, I'll ask them, where is that source data? Where are you looking at? And they'll say, well, I went on this big site that talks about real estate all the time. I punched in the address, it told me, great, but this, these are the other factors and considerations you should think of, and the seller should have thought of those things as well. I give them a rundown if, in fact, we end up writing an offer for less than what the property is being marketed for, which isn't unusual. I'll want to include verification and validation of those numbers as to why, if in fact we're trying to match the market. Now, if the buyer is in a, a mind frame where he believes that he's all in control and this is a buyer's market, which isn't the case, but sometimes buyers, they won't listen to you because they're getting their information from other sources and that's fine because as a real estate agent, you definitely wanna make your client happy. You just don't want your client to get into trouble. So whatever it takes to keep them happy, that's fine. But if they start to go over this line that's gonna create a mess for them, then you as an agent need to step forward. And even if that means blowing that relationship, losing that deal, that transaction, that client, at least you've sided on the better, the better side of that equation. And you stood up and you said, these are the reasons why you're making a mistake. And then you let them do what they need to do after that point potentially probably not being involved because sometimes these mistakes can be incredibly detrimental and it kind of comes down to it's not happening on my watch. 
I guess that brings in the law enforcement end of it. All right, so we have uh, 24 properties that have gone back on the market, 35 properties have gone into escrow, 44 have gone pending, which is a deeper part of escrow. So we're talking about 70, 75 listings actually entering escrow. Of the new listings, 82, we still have a little bit of an overlap. I wouldn't be surprised if over the next few months, we got into the six or 650s as far as listings go. The thing that's holding back the market are of course the interest rates. In addition, the sellers out there that own these residences are locked in at two and 3% in some cases. Those are the sellers that aren't really moving very quickly because their interest rates are incredibly low and they more than likely can rent out that house and probably make a profit at that interest rate. Another thing that's been popping up on the news lately and be aware of this, there are companies out there that are starting to advertise how they are going to try to help you assume somebody's mortgage. So if somebody has a mortgage, FHA and VA are examples of mortgages that could be transferred from one party to another. But there's a lot of variables here. First off, even if you're not a veteran, you could assume a VA loan, but it's gonna be up to the lender and how willing are they going to be to do that. In addition, if you're going to be, let's say, assuming an FHA loan, which you can, it also is dependent on the lender. In addition, if that particular FHA buyer has property mortgage insurance attached to their payment, then you're gonna to have to pay that as well. Usually that does not go away because you're assuming the loan. But there's also gonna be a difference. If you're assuming a loan because it has a low interest rate, two to 3%, that means that that property was probably sold two to three to four years ago. At that low interest rate, so that seller has equity, Whatever that number of equity is, the value, if you're going to assume it, how are you going to cover the rest to make up the full amount that the seller wants for his residence? You're still going to potentially have to have a loan for that other part or come out of pocket in cash and offer that to the seller and make everything work out within the real estate sales and have that loan be assumable. Things to consider though, what's that offset going to look like and what's that interest rate going to look like? And is somebody actually going to want to have a secondary position because you still have that primary loan. And if you default, they're going to get everything more than likely as long as the market stays where it is and continues to increase and doesn't decline much if it does. They're still going to get the first, they'll still get what they want. That's that first loan, the one that you assumed that that very low interest rate because you're buying with the seller's interest rate. The other side of that, the other loan though, what's that interest rate going to look like? Is that going to be at market or is it going to be even higher because there's more of a risk involved with that type of loan? These are questions to ask the lenders before you get too excited and think that it's going to be a great idea for you to assume somebody's mortgage. In addition, if you're assuming their mortgage, giving them the difference in cash or financing, the rest of it, then the seller has a question to answer as well. Where are they going to move? Is there going to be a residence that's going to work out for them? Or is are they encountering the same thing as a buyer in today's market is or are the limited inventory? Great questions, lots of information online. Just make sure that the information that you're getting makes sense. And if it doesn't, you can reach out to me and have me clear it up as well. Also, in finality, I will say this. If you are working with an agent or a lender and the agent or lender is telling you something that seems to be valuable you want to make sure there's no confusion so my suggestion to my clients is always send me an email and ask me about what i've told you if in fact it's very deal dependent or something that carries such gravity with it that if i'm mistaken it's going to put you in harm's way you want to follow up with everything, if you can, to those people that are giving you the information. The lender, the real estate agent, the new home agent, whomever this is, you wanna make sure that you completely understand what they're trying to explain so you don't get yourself into trouble. I'm Connor McIver. Thank you so much for checking out this video today. This is the Saturday Market Update. I'll be back tomorrow. You can find me online, of course, at SantaClaritaOpenHouses.com. I'm Connor with Honor, over and out.